Hello, my name is George C. Bradley, and today's presentation will be on testing the assumptions for binary logistic regression using SPSS. Binary logistic regression is the statistical technique used to predict the relationship between dependent variable y and the independent variable or variable x where the dependent variable is binary binary in in nature you have a dichotic variable the data set here let's take a look at our data set our database our database i got it online and it's hbs 500 and we have four variables. We have a calculus, whether a person passed or failed. That is our dependent variable there, our dependent. That is our outcome. That's our dependent variable there. And then we have three other independent or predicted variables. Um, we have trigonometry, pass or fail the course. We have gender, male or female. And we have a continuous variable math achievement score now let's take a look at our assumptions we have five assumptions here and we're going to go over each assumption on how to test each assumption critical assumption in logistical regression is the requirement of no extreme outliers in the data set no extreme outliers in the data set. Let's take a look at our database. Take a look at our database, our outcome variable. We have calculus, our independent variable, the course trigonometry, um, math achievement, and gender. We have this as sex here. And let's take go to analyze. And we will go to regression across binary logistics, logistic, and I'll refresh here. I'll refresh, and I'll go with outcome variable calculus, trigonometry. We have math achievement. And we have sex here. Now we're looking for outliers. So we're going to save here. We're going to look at Cook's. Um, Cook's test. Okay. That's one. And then another option we have. We have um, case-wise residual. We can click there. And I always like this range to be around 2.2. Five. Now with Cook's test, we analyze the information here. Uh, let's go down, and we're going to look at um, case-wide list first, and we don't have anything there. So n out of the 500 cases, we didn't have anything that showed in the case-wise residual. So what we're going to do right here, we're going to get out of this, and then we're going to go to Cooks. Okay, and right here, we're going to click here, and we're going to descend, so we're going to have the highest first. And let's take a look here. We've cooked the range. Let's look at the range. If it's point five okay at least point five we're moving around that range you know we need to consider the case but when it's above point one the one we see here this this case here then we need to pay attention so if we were conducting a logistical regression and we'd have one outlier that's showing here we would have to analyze that row and see what's going on okay so we did have one let me go back here and set this back up like it should be okay now let's go back 
and look at assumption two. Logistic regression requires the observation to be independent of each other. In other words, the observations should not come from repeat measurements or match data. That's not the situation here. Each person is individual out of the 500 cases that we have. So that one here is met. Let's go to assumption three. Logistic regression requires there be little or no multicollinearity among the independent variables. What does that mean? This means that the, that the independent variables or predictors should not be highly correlated with each other. What is that range? Highly correlated when something's around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 in that area. That should give us some concern of multicollinearity. But let's look at an example here. We have two ways that we can check this. Well, there are others, but we're going to look at two. We'll go here, and we'll go to correlation. Let's go to correlation on bivariate. We're going to um, we're going to reset. Let's look at trigonometry. Let's look at math achievement. Let's look at sex here. Let's hit OK. And we have the correlation here. We can blow it up a little bit. Blow it up a little bit. And as we can see right here with trig and math achievement, that's pretty Hi, we can see right here with math achievement and sex, and we can see with trigonometry and sex, but nothing reaches the range of 0.7. So with our simple um, correlation here, we did not see any multicollinearity. Let's click out of that, and let's look at another way we can check for that or test that assumption. We can go here, and we can go to regression, and we go to linear. Now, we don't have this right here. We don't have this set up in logistical. We have to go to linear, but we'll put our same setup here. Trigonometry and independent. Math achievement. Sex here. And we can look at statistic, and we can look at collinearity, diagnostic, click there, and we can hit OK. OK, we'll scroll down, and we'll look at the coefficient box here. Expand that a little bit. And we can go right here to our coefficient box, and we can look at collinearity tolerance. In this column here, if we have anything that's less than 0.1, than 0.1, then we would have a problem with that variable. It would be, um, it would have a high correlation with one of the other independent variables. But as you can see, this is safe right here. Everything is above 0.1. Everything is above 0.1. Okay. Now, let's go back to our PowerPoint here. Now, we've uh, checked for outliers. We looked at um, independence. And now we had an opportunity to look at multicollinearity because if you have a violation here, this can affect, affect the outcome. And a lot of time you would try to combine the variable or eliminate it or choose, the one, or choose one of them instead of using both if you have multicollinearity. Let's take a look at assumption four, assumption four right here. Logistic regression assumes linearity of independent variables and 
log odds. Okay, log odds. Okay, we have log odds there. And although this analysis does not require the independent or the dependent variable to be related linear, it is required that the independent variables are linear as it relates to the log odds. Okay, the log odds. And we're going to use a special test here. Let's look at that. All right, we had the box Tidwell transformation. Write that down. Box Tidwell transformation. We're going to use that test, and you can Google it or look at a YouTube video on it. We're going to look at an example of it right now. Okay, let's go to the data set and let's take a look. Now, the one thing we need to keep in mind here is that we're going to use some, some transformation. And you're only going to use the continuous independent predictor or variable. If you have two, three, you'd have to use this method for each one. Okay? We only have one. Our trigonometry and our sex, the variable we have there, both of those are dichotic. So let's go to transformation. Okay, we can reset here. And I'm going to give this a new name. We're going to our math achievement. I'm going to look at auto math. I will go here, our expression. Okay, now we're going to go right here to math achievement. We're going to put that in the over here time so we're going to square it math achievement again okay, okay close parentheses close parentheses here and so right now as you can see we have a new variable okay so that's a uh, part of our transformation let's go here and let's go back to regression, let's go right here. Alrighty, we're going to take out um, trig because that's dichotic, and we're going to take out sex, that's dichotic, and we're going to okay, run a our logistic regression, and we're going to go down here. Okay, we're going to go down here, and as you can see right here, that alone, okay, it is significant. Alone is significant. Let's go back, analyze, go back, there. Now, let's add our new. Our new variable, auto math, which is square of the math, the square of math achievement. Okay? And we're going to hit OK. And we're going to go here. And as you can see right here, there's not a significance. There's not a significance here. So we have met the linearity for assumption four. Okay? If this was significant, okay, then we would not be able to use, we'd have to, we would not be able to use that independent that independent or predicted variable. Okay, let's go back. Okay, let's take a look at assumption five. Assumption five. Logistic 
regression typically requires a large sample size. Okay, you need a large sample size here. The general guideline is that you need at least a minimum of 10 cases with the least frequent outcome for each independent variable in the model. For example, this is a rule of thumb here. If you have five independent variables, we have three in ours, but this one example have five, and the expected probability of your least frequent outcome is 0.10, then you would need a minimum of 500 because what you have the 10 cases times your five um, individual variables divided by um, point. 0.10, and if you would multiply that, then divide it, you would have 500. Okay, you would have 500. Let's take a look at another way to find a sample size. Okay, let's take another. Let's look at another way to find a sample size. We're gonna go to our G Power. Okay, we're gonna go to our G Power, and I'll drag this over in the middle. And we're going to look at our G power here. We're going to go to test and we're going to go to correlation and regression. Go over all the way down. Now we have logistical regression here. Okay, we have our logistical regression. So we have to go to our um, blocks over here and we have the tail. Unless it's some empirical information that you have in the literature that says you have a one tail, this should be two. The odds ratio here, the odds ratio, let's go and see how we determine that. Okay, we'll go over here and we'll go to this box. And this first box here is our proportion of success outcome. I'd like to use 0.55, and that's um, related to the literature. And then we have our proportion of success outcome with the control or the compared or the com, compared group and that would be 0.45 and then we would calculate and bring that over and okay look at now we have a new odds ratio we have our proportion of success outcome with our control or compared group and we have our probability which is our significant level at 0 0.05. Now we have our power. Our minimum size of our power should be 0.8. And right here with the R square here, we're going to leave that at zero. We have a logistical regression. So we don't have um, normality here, nothing normal. We're going to go with binary. Um, okay, we have a binomial. Okay, and right here we're going to look at our two groups. We're going to say they're about the half and half, so we'll have 0.5 there. And we will calculate. As you can see, when you calculate here, you will have a sample size, okay? A sample size of um, seven seven hundred and eighty six seven hundred and eighty six predicated on this information. You can make some adjustments with this sample size. Basically, by making some adjustments on some things that you might see here in the literature. Okay. Okay, if you have any questions pertaining to testing the assumptions for logistic regression, please email me at georgecbradley59 at gmail.com or post some information on my YouTube video. Thank you very much.